surprise. Do you have any siblings? I have an older brother. So, on the board... <laughs> what, what does your brother do? On, Where does he live? We'll talk later. Okay? <laughs> on the board, we have the derivatives of the six inverse trig functions, right? The one thing I want you to notice is that sine and cosine are exactly the same. The only difference is that the derivative of our cosine is negative, right? Same for tangent and cotangent, same for secant and cosecant, right? And again, if you remember, just like the regular um, trig derivatives, all the co-functions, the derivatives are all negative. Cosine, cotangent, cosecant, negative, negative, negative. We're going to have another speech. Okay. So, no. So, if you decide to use the memorizing method for finding these derivatives, you only technically have to memorize three of them, right? Because the other three are the same, just negative. So, do you, does that make sense? Word, yeah, I understand it. Okay, good. Now, I am strongly going to, to recommend that you memorize for a couple of reasons. Number one, it is way faster than deriving these derivatives by hand, right? Um, but also because when we, in second semester, when we do antiderivatives of in inverse trig functions, right, you're going to have to do all these backwards. And then there's no trick. You have to have them memorized. So you're going to have to have these memorized anyway, second semester. So you might as well memorize them forwards right now. Okay? Okay. Uh, however, I am going to show you both ways so that whichever way you prefer, you can use. There's nothing wrong with deriving them from scratch every time. Okay. So we're going to start with the easiest of all of them, which is y equals arc sine x. Now if y is arc sine x and we need to do the derivative, your u is x, right? Yeah. The argument is x. The derivative of the argument for all six of these, the derivative of the argument goes on top. What is the derivative of x? One. 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 It's not x prime. It's 1, right? And then on the bottom, you've got three possibilities. Arc sine and arc secant both have roots. The s's both have roots. Arc tan does not have a root. Okay? Arc sine is 1 minus u squared. Arc secant is u squared minus 1. And arc secant has an absolute value x. Right? Yeah, so anyway, you have something that I don't know. You'll get them straight eventually. Okay. But for our sign, it's the square root of 1 minus x squared, because your u is x. We put like, how did you do that? Okay, so that's method one, right? Method one is just doing it, using the formula and plugging in and doing it. Method two is to derive it from scratch. And it requires a little bit of pre-calc knowledge. So I'm, we're going to walk through the second method. We'll do this for the next problem as well. And then we're going to, um, after that, I'm going to stick with just plug and chug into the formulas. Okay. So here we go. When you use the alternate method, the first thing you do is you take the sine of both sides. So if I take the sine of the left, I get the sine of y. On the right, I get the sine of the arc sine x. of x, x, which equals x, because sine and arc sine are inverse functions, right? So the sine of the arc sine of x is x. Okay. Now, I've got a simple equation, sine y equals x, and I'm going to differentiate implicitly. So what's the derivative of sine y? Uh, cosine cosine y dy dx, right? Not the cosine of dy dx. The argument never changes, right? So cosine y times dy dx. What's the derivative of x? One. Oh, I see something. Okay. Now, when we solve for dy dx, we get 1 over cosine y, which I'm going to write as secant y. You can't leave a y in your answer, and your answer can't be written in trigonometric form. It's got to be algebraic. So, first thing we're going to do is get rid of the y. What is y? 
arc sine x. So replace the y with arc sine x. No, that's trigonometric. That's we're getting closer though, right? This is trigonometric form. We got to convert this to algebraic. Do you guys remember yesterday in the lesson we wrote something just like this in algebraic form? Do you guys remember how we simplified? Remember we did like cosine of arctan and secant. We drew a triangle, right? <coughs> so we draw a little triangle. You pick an angle, and technically the angle would be y. And you'd say, all right, y is the angle whose sine is x over 1. So the sine of this angle is x over 1. I need this side. So Pythagorean theorem says this squared plus this squared equals this squared. So this squared equals this squared minus this squared. This side is the square root of 1 squared minus x squared. Oh, sir. Oh, 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 oh. But we still have that weird. We need the secant of this angle. Secant is hypotenuse over adjacent. So the secant of this angle is 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared. And you have now just derived the derivative of arc sine x. That's a lot. Okay. okay. Yes. If you forget it, you can always just remember, okay, well, I can take the sine of both sides and get rid of it, and then hopefully kind of walk through from there. All right, let's take it up a tiny notch, and we'll do a tangent one because I think Rayon said he was confused why there wasn't a root for tan. So let's do y equals the arctan of, how about, let's do uh, 4x cubed. So changing the argument a little bit. Okay, so we'll first start by just using the formula. Everyone, try to just find the derivative using the formula for tangent, or for arctan, and see if you can get it. goes on top. So what's on top? 12x squared. On the bottom for tangent is 1 plus the argument squared, right? And you can leave it like this. Uh, however, it's if it's a multiple choice, it'll probably be squared out. And what would 4x cubed squared be? 16x to the 6. 6. Okay, that makes sense? Yes, it does, doesn't it? All right, let's do it the long way. Yay! Yay, long way. Here we go. What would we do first? Uh, take the tangent. Take the tangent of both sides. So on the left, we have tan y. And on the right, what are we left with? 4x cubed. 4x cubed. Let's take the derivative implicitly. That's a good idea. Mm. What's the derivative of tangent y? No idea. Oh, secant squared. Secant squared, secant squared y dy dx. Dy dx. And on the right, 12x squared. Bro, is that why it's like, ah. is it squared? So you're the square root and the, yeah. no. But that this not? is how you get the derivative on top, right? No, but I'm saying like the reason why there's not a square root on the bottom is because it's secant squared. Oh, yes. Yes. All right. So here we go. So dy dx equals... What's it equal? 12x squared dividing by secant is the same thing as multiplying by cosine, right? So times cosine squared y. What is y? It's hard. 
It's the arctan of 4x cubed. What do I do now? Draw a triangle. City goose. So let's see. This is the angle whose tangent is 4x cubed. So I would have an opposite side of 4x cubed over an adjacent side of 1. What's the hypotenuse? 1 plus square root of 1 plus 16x. Right, 4x cubed squared. So my answer, I have 12x squared times the cosine squared of this, right? So cosine would be adjacent over hypotenuse, but I have to square it. So I get 1 over the square root squared, which is how the square root goes away. And I'm going to write it down. <laughs> Bless you. So we have 12x squared over 1 plus 16x to the 6th. So this method, it works, it's beautiful, it's there's you know mathematically sound, it's just much, much longer. So it's up to you. I will tell you tomorrow when I go over homework questions that I will be just using formulas. I'm not gonna sit here and derive them all every time. Okay, moving on. Let's do one that's a little harder. Does that worksheet do at the end of class? What worksheet? The extra credit worksheet? Tomorrow, yes. What you have done is what, at the end of class, whatever you have done is what you turn in. So I will try to keep homework questions short so that you have enough time to. You should get go over the extra. homework on Thursday then. Oh, we'll see. If we just do top five, we could probably do it pretty quick. I don't know. Top two took pretty long today. Yeah, but that's related rates. Those are big problems. That's why they're only three. Okay, so why don't you guys try this one? How about y equals two times the arc secant of three x squared? See if you can find the derivative of that. Sizing the like the square around the example. Right. He didn't even start it. Make sure. I wrote the problem down. I don't want to mess up. You have you're writing in pencil, Mustafa. Yeah. All right. It looks, it looks messy and unprofessional. When you have a coefficient, it just gets multiplied by the derivative, right? right? So the two is just two times whatever the answer is. What goes on top? Six x. Six x. Who did? Okay. Secant, secant and cosecant are unusual in that. You put the square root of the argument in, or I'm sorry, the absolute value of the argument in front times the square root of argument squared <coughs> minus 1. Now, if this were multiple choice, it would be simplified. Wait, this is price. Yes. You square root of 3x squared. Oh, squared. Thank you. So, the absolute value of 3x squared is 3x squared because 3x squared is always positive, right? So we have 3x squared. We can drop the absolute value. In here, we get 9x to the fourth 
minus 1. And then you can do some canceling, right? So after this, you end up with on top a 4 and on the bottom an x. So my guess is if this was a multiple choice problem, that's what the answer choice would be. I don't know for sure. Yeah. That would be my multiple guess. Multiple choice problems really young, guys. Yeah. Yeah. They're tough. We should stop doing that. We should continue doing this. No, I don't know. I think we need practice for the AP exam. We do. Absolutely, Absolutely we do. I like to see this We actually don't have any practice at all. Okay. Just a little word of caution. One more quick example. She's not about printed out. That's not even fair. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, the, why don't you print out copies for it's us so that it's our it's notes it's are all like really cute and pretty? I made these notes so, so, so many years story. ago. Just listed my examples. Yeah, but if you never, if you never change your videos, then these videos would become just like the notes made them so many years ago. I know. What if the AP person Come changes? On. Are you going to take down all my videos? You know what I found out is changing in 2016? Why will it not focus? Come on. There it goes. They are officially adding Lo Patel's rule to, uh, to what? the AB curriculum. But you, but you already did that. I know. So you're just, just ahead of the game. Well, yeah. It, because I love Lo Patel's rule just because it's awesome to use, right? I it's like a free tool. So you don't even have to make a new video so when they add it. I know. Do you know they dumbed down the ACT or SAT? Yeah, it's going to be two parts and you don't miss. Okay. We, let's get into that And they also made the words moment. like really what simple. What rule do we have to use for this? Like banana. What is a banana? Prime a yellow fruit. Derivative of X is one. Times arc and cosine. How do you say banana? 2x plus x times the derivative of arc cosine 2x. What goes on top? 2, except it's negative because it's a co-function, right? And then on the bottom, it's like the derivative of sine. So you get the square root of 1 minus 2x quantity squared. Wow. Just no, you can have trig in the answer if there's just there's no way to simplify it. This you have to leave in. Oh, you did you did a product okay. over, didn't you? We did product, uh, yes. Gotcha. Alright, so that ended the lesson. So